Afternoon VC. Alright, so this video is going to be very similar to the last. So a wide variety of stuff. Uh, records that have come in the last few weeks and whatnot. So we'll get to showing these. Uh, and at the end of the video, I'll have a channel recommendation. So stick around for that. 7 inch, the X. This is with Braider Muziki. Uh, Militon on the A side and Semi Rini on the B side. This is 6.2 in a series of six. Uh, one of them being a 12 inch, but uh, I did finally find all of them. And this was the last piece. Um, great punk band out of the Netherlands, as you all know from watching this channel. And the X Records label, which Alex pointed out Franz Ferdinand stole the shit out of. Didn't even think about that, but god dang, they. Completely plagiarized the hell out of that. Uh, all the inserts are here. I'm not gonna pull them all out because it's kind of they're kind of just paper thin deals. But uh, yeah, and Freedom Ruziki played the Zaz on this, which is an interesting instrument and is the vocalist. But uh, so this is a wild avant affair from the X um, with their classic punk sound as well in in on this um wild stuff from 1991 um if i recall roger coleman roger coleman's got all of these um his band actually played with them up in boston i think i've talked about that before um but yeah i think i think these were all mail order directly from the band is what he said back then so not easy to track down um Next, I thought I had this on CD and I didn't, and so I did pick up the vinyl. Uh, Mark Lanigan Band, Blues Funeral. So this is an original on 4AD, uh, double LP. This is in beautiful shape. Um, and major loss in the music world, uh, especially for Seattle. Um, another one of the icons from there now gone um this this time i think covid ended up being the culprit um which is a shame but yeah this is a great record um i like bubblegum better but this is really good stuff uh such a great singer songwriter uh great guitars as always on these records fantastic I think that was from 2012. Next, I got a, a player from Britain that I really dig, and so if I see any of his records, I'm going to pick them up, because uh, they don't pop up all that much. Uh, Elton Dean Quintet, the Bologna Tape. This is on Ogan from 1985, an original copy of this. Not many Ogan uh, titles have ever even been repressed. I, don't, I doubt this has even seen a reissue. Two Long Sides. Uh, Harry Beckett's on trumpet, Nick Evans trombone, Marcio Matos double bass, and Liam Janaki on the drums. A few good British players there with Harry and Nick. Um, yeah, a jamming affair, you know, that mid-80s uh, British kind of progressive sound. Um, this is killer, I mean... And this one, this one's uh, fairly inexpensive. I mean, you can probably track down a copy, 25, 30 bucks. It's not one of the crazy expensive Ogans. Um, and yeah, there's plenty of copies floating around of this. Um, this was imported from North Country Distributors in Redwood, New York, which is kind of like the New York version of uh, Rick Ballard Imports. <laughs> Find a lot of stuff with those stickers similar to the Rick Ballard stickers. Um, so yeah, we'll show you the Yogan label. Great cover too. I was assuming it's Bologna, Italy on the cover. I could be wrong, but there you go. Killer stuff. From the UK. And Ogan is a great label. Um, 
So yeah, next I just dipped into Lunchbox after work Friday. Uh, picked this up uh, for a couple of reasons. Well, one, it's the best band of all time. Two, it is a remaster. And three, it's on Discord and was it was marked down to fourteen ninety nine from seventeen ninety nine, you know, for release price. And it's Longfish Sound and Time. Now I have an original of this. I have the original CD. I have everything. But it has been remastered and is on gold vinyl. So I think it's probably going to be a fairly limited run on the gold. Um, this is basically a repress of the twenty sixteen remaster. Um, there's the gold. Not really necessary to do colored wax. I'm kind of surprised Discord even started doing it. But I did not have the 2016 remaster. So we picked this up. And it sounds good. Uh, original still better. Uh, but happy to, you know, I'm a completist with Longfish. So there you go. And Daniel Higgs is a genius. And that stuff is real repetitive groove uh repetitive guitars repetitive drums fantastic vocals uh original stuff um baltimore band was it originally in yeah originally in 96 that was put out uh i did dig around didn't find any jazz didn't find any seven inches it's the normal places I dig in Lunchbox, but in the new arrivals I did pick two records up. Uh, this was cheap. It's a reissue uh, on Drag City from 2018 of the Fourth Movement, which is the, uh, I think, Hackney Brothers, if I'm not mistaken, from the band Death from Detroit. Um, yeah, Triangle Records from 1980 originally. Um, this is a nice package. And what sold me is the insert. Look at these guys. And I have one of the death records. But yeah, I was like, what an insert. And uh, there's another insert with words. Well, I might as well show you the record since I got it out. Custom labels. Uh, a nice reissue. Uh, I mean, clean record, sounds great. Rock. Um, I don't know, acidy rock. Um, it jams. I like Death better, but this is pretty good stuff. Um, so the fourth movement. Some good early Detroit stuff. 19, yeah, 1980. Cheap reissue. Uh, but this, this was, this is why we dig for records. Uh, I had been thinking about picking up this record for a while now, because I, I didn't have any Ramones in the collection at all and there's a million reissues so I was like it's overwhelming you're like ah, I don't even know which which to go with so usually I just for, say forget it and don't even get it um, now Jimmy over at Repo had an original on the wall for a hundred dollars uh, a month or two back and he sold it because I wasn't going to pay $100 for this record when there are a million reissues. But um, here this one was. And I didn't even really look to see which pressing it was, but it was marked uh, VG, VG. And, and I think it's a little bit more, not VG plus, but somewhere. It, it's, it's in decent shape. Rocket to Russia, first U.S. press with the sterling stamps, the whole nine. On Sire from 1977 with that still has the original uh, sleeve insert so yeah I didn't have any Ramones and everybody knows this record and here it is and this is a first US press it's a freaking great deal uh, it's just the kind of stuff you can run into in lunchbox very stoked to find that uh, next this came in from the same seller in Georgia that I got Unknown Soldier from. It's Fela Kuti with the Egypt 80 original Sufferhead. So this is later Fela. So this is like 81. I think this is the latest Fela record I have. And I have a ton of Fela. But um, it's still really fucking killers. Afrobeat. Uh, this is 
original Nigerian pressing on the Lagos International label, and this was super cheap. I even was able to put in an offer on this, a uh, low ball offer. So I think it's like 30 some bucks, um, which is a hell of a deal for an original Fela. Um, but it is not, it's not VG plus, it's VG, uh, covers, covers VG, covers pretty damn good, VG, um, bordering on VG plus. Um, I mean, you usually don't, they usually look a lot more beat than this. So yeah, that was a steal. Um, and yeah, great Afro beat. Um, that'll also be in the DJ set probably. Uh, let's see, got a package in from Angry Mom Records in Ithaca. Uh, some, uh, I was stoked that they had this. Uh, that's Chris Corsano and uh, Bill Orkut, uh, Made Out of Sound, uh, the duo record. Um, kind of a heavy on free jazz affair uh, and yeah I, I've been dismissing the guitar when it comes to jazz but now I'm finding all these great guitar driven jazz records and this is one of them uh, Palalia Records if I said that right from 2021 and this is going for crazy money online like 80 90 bucks and this was 24 you know new out of the shop so as it should be um, you know not the crazy resale market because that's just nuts but here it is um, stoked to have that and then I couldn't pass on this reissue um, great label too that does reissue Superior Viaduct so this was originally released in 78 this is the Harold Budd Pavilion of Dreams and just a brilliant ambient record um, one that Alex had played in a, one of his videos where he was spinning records, maybe one of his live sets, and you know put the original on the on the radar, and it's just 200, 250 bucks all day. And you want one of these records, these types of records, to be quiet, and so this reissue is, fits the bill. Marion Brown's here, for God's sakes, a bunch of marimba players. Uh, the the harp is beautiful on this. Um, yeah, real chill. Ambient stuff from 78, um, so kind of uh, early on in that whole realm. And I think Harold Budd passed recently, too, during the pandemic. Yeah, there's some great stuff on this. Good reissue. And then, um, lastly here for records, I uh, had to pick up some 7-inch sleeves from Repo, so I went in and found this in the bin and grabbed it, uh, the Thelonious Monk Orchestra at Town Hall. Now this is a original first mono from 1959 and it was cheap. And so that's why I grabbed it. Now there is some surface noise that you gotta power through when Monk is playing, a f and there's not many times where he's playing solo on this because it is such a large ensemble. But other than that, once they kick in, it's good to go powerhouse old Riverside uh, pressing and the B-side is absolutely fantastic the first cut on the B-side when Monk starts on the piano is a straight sounding like Sun Ra, just a total Sun Ra vibe which is threw me for a loop um, Donald Bird's on trumpet Eddie Bird's on trombone you got a, the gamut when it comes to the sax on this you got Phil Woods on alto Charlie Rouse tenor I love Charlie Rouse, Pepper Adams on baritone. Got a French horn player, tuba player who minds his P's and Q's and doesn't try to overtake everybody like a jackass. And then you've got Sam Jones on bass and Art Taylor on the drums. Fantastic performance. Um, on the front side, I, Friday the 13th is the only track I really dig on that, on the, the second cut. The rest of it's okay. Amongst the version of Monk's Mood is really actually not that great. But the B-side's killer all the way through. Um, real cohesive unit in a in a bop, the bop realm, leading almost leaning on hard bop at times for 1959. Yeah, o OG too. So that was a nice grab. All I wanted to get was some seven-inch sleeves. So okay, so channel recommendation. My longtime friend Joe. Uh, God, we've been friends for 
probably 25 plus years. He started his channel, so it's uh, it's just Joe J. I'll leave a link. I think that's the name of his channel. Uh, he moved up to Winston. He's got a hell of a hell of a record collection. He's always digging for records um, when he's got free time, and he's he's gotten into the jazz. Um, uh, I introduced him to a lot of a lot of jazz, but he 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 had been into some jazz prior, but. Um, his wheelhouse, he, he gets into a lot of the earlier, uh, the earlier straighter ahead stuff, but, uh, some really, he finds some rare, rare records, and, uh, but yeah, he's into, you, you name it, you name, you name the music, he's into it, um, in some, some fashion, so if it's, if it's got groove, so you're probably gonna get to see it in his videos, um, and yeah, I mean, he introduced me to, all kinds of bands over the years, and vice versa. Like, I wouldn't know about, and you'll notice by the Trail of Dead without Joe, I wouldn't know Doves, probably. Um, a lot of great bands he's introduced me to. We've we've gone to shows together, hundreds of shows. Um, met him through our friend Cheetah. He was playing bass in Five Times Down. I ended up being the roadie for that band. So, yeah, and Joe's a musician, so... He played bass. This is rap rock from the mid '90s. Uh, always got compared to like a cross between 311 and Rage Against the Machine, which is about as best a comparison as I can give it. But um, if you ever want to check it out, uh, you can look up the video for "Looking Down the Barrel." It was in the Carry on the Carry Two soundtrack, and opens the movie for that Carry Two for Stephen King. Um. Yeah, the ten thousand dollar song, great song. Um, used to sell out gigs in Charlotte. People used to th fucking throw down for them. Great stuff. Uh, Brett, killer guitarist. And so yeah, Joe played bass for them um, for a while, and he is currently lead singer for Dixie Lee Box. This is the got first Dixie Lee Box CD here show this one just because of the I mean I think I've shown this before but uh Charlie Shear the guitarist his father took these pictures in Miami of the coke whores he used to hang with and so that 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 ended up on this on the insert here fantastic uh repetitive guitars pretty uh original vocals um that Joe does with that band. Uh, they got a bunch of releases, but uh, they they got a new album that's going to drop here hopefully this year. Um, he also plays drums for Married Man Band, as I talked about, uh, that I play guitar for. Um, he's also uh, done some live stuff with Moon Mullins, which is another band of Charlie Shears. Um, this was his CD, Moon Mullins, All Hail Officer Krupke. Now, Joe's not on this, but uh, Doug Williams is on bass on this, who was in that group that Joe played uh, drums and a little bit guitar with live with them, and this is fantastic. If you can find this, do so. You will thank me. All Hail Officer Krupke from Moon Mullins on the Rebuilt label from 2006. This was uh, recorded at Intercurrent Studio in New York City, mastered at Silver Sonia in DC. So yeah, just like all the great Discord bands. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Charlie, Charlie's an interesting character, but a hell of a guitarist and singer as well. So yeah, Joe J, check out the channel. Y'all be good. Peace.